Hey guys, welcome back to LPLR Orchids. Tonight, Paphiopetalum Tyanum. Yeah, recent bloom, although in full disclosure, we can't take full credit because this plant came to us uh, just with the top of the low bud sticking out uh, right at the base. However, uh, this plant, Paph Tyanum, discovered uh, only in 2006, so I think our most recent um, species shown here on uh, our pillar orchids. And of course, it's from Thailand, so the, um, the name, Paph Tyanum, of course, reflects its country of origin, Thailand. Um, where it mostly grows on limestone cliffs and in cracks in rocks and stuff. So that's, uh, I guess, shaded um, like several other Paphiopetalums. Uh, they are lithophytic. came to us in bark, so we left it, and we just water it once a week. So I'll show you, you know, it, the bark looked pretty good when it came to us. Um, and so once a week watering with our other plants and... You know, we fertilize it like every couple of weeks um, when we fertilize our other plants. You know, I'm not going to get into the whole fertilizer debate. Like, I think our water here without added fertilizers is pretty stock full of, of dissolved solids and stuff. So um, as far as light, uh, yeah, we keep it like in bright shade as close to the windows. Like all of our, or most of our Paphiopetalums, we keep them in bright shade out of the direct sunlight as it comes across the room. So in our main room here. Um, yeah, but this plant is really cool. We, we love it because it's also a foliage plant. Um, so like many other orchids, it's not just grown for its flowers. This one has some really nice modeling on the leaves and it's a also a very compact plant so you know easy to grow in a home environment or in a windowsill somewhere where you don't have a lot of room the flower uh, is also very nice it is a white a white paphiopetalum flower it's in the subgenus brachiopetalum uh, however it has these on this one, the hood is a little, the dorsal sepal is a little, like, smaller than some of the other ones I see online. And the petals are a little bit more extended, but we really like the flower symmetry on this one. It's about maybe five centimeters, a little over, from tip to tip of the petals. Um, and it, yeah, it's straightened out nicely. That's another nice thing, is it, it, doesn't really need to be staked. It does lean a little bit, of course, like we have it propped up now, but like normally it kind of like leans over a little bit, but this is unstaked, so it does grow a nice erect inflorescence. Stop it from wobbling. The uh, lip is, uh, the pouch is a really nice, uh, like these little ones that look like mushrooms, like the micranthum, which we'll show here in a minute. The pouch is like this big, huge, uh, well, on the micranthum, it's much larger, but on these, it's a, it's a, you know, in proportion to the size of the, fl of the flower. So it's small. Um, but down inside, it has really nice purple markings, which um, you can't really see from the front. You have to look down uh, from the top, or you can see them also from the back here when it's backlit. And on the sin sepal, the little protective part that comes out uh, when the flower is in bud, that also has like purple markings um, that you can see from the back. And actually the hood, the purple markings are much more visible from the back of the flower uh, than you guys can probably see from the front. But also this, which, yeah, we'll show close-ups, but I'll try to bring it in. The, uh, the nice column face with this green-yellow, uh, like, center that is, like, crawling out. I mean, it really pops. You can see it from a distance, and it's, uh, it's the most bold coloring on this flower. It's really cool. 
<laughs> anyway, a bit more about the description of the general plant growth. So yeah, it, the flower does kind of grow this weird like little spur, which please comment and, and teach us a little bit here about like what this thing is that grows out. I mean, it, it I've read that like maybe this can have more than one inflorescence, kind of like the Tiana because, so I'll show the Ty, or the Micranthum, sorry, now. Um, the Micranthum also had this weird habit. Uh, we did not, we weren't doing YouTube when this was in flower a few months back. Um, and so I didn't film this flower. However, again, I had a bigger, a much bigger pouch on the Micranthum than the Tyanum. However, uh, it kind of is similar in the, its growth habits and that the leaves are modeled except the modeling is much more uniform and much more prominent. Um, and the leaves are shorter and more wide. They're wider, shorter and wider, more robust, I guess you could say. And, uh, you know, a nice deep cleavage in the leaves, but a really nice sturdy looking plant, which is also finally noticed growing well i won't show you but we finally noticed the micranthum is uh growing a new growth after it bloomed so thankfully i was kind of getting nervous a little bit about that one uh because we love it for its foliage um it's such a cool plant and very compact i mean this is like a micro but the flowers are big probably you know maybe twice as big i guess you could say as the tyanum so interesting that's a really cool patheopetalum if you have a chance to pick one up i would uh definitely and easy to grow also in the foliage camp delinatii so more modeling again bigger spots so and these on the underside of the leaves it's going to be hard to show but on the other underside of the leaves they have like really dense purple spotting, which uh, is different than the top of the leaves, which has more model, you know, uh, bigger, bigger variegated patches. Um, and it's a bigger plant for the Delinatii, but still also compact uh, compared to some of the other uh, Paphiopetalums, which Again, check out the video on Gertrixianum, but I mean, you can see like, here's the Gertrixianum, right? Like it's a, I mean, even it is kind of a smaller plant or a mid-range plant in the paths, but you can see now just for scale, how big the Tyanum is. It's a, it's a much smaller, you know, compact plant, which is nice. Just a really quick shout out to my mom for being the first one that has submitted a, a user a viewer orchid in bloom. And uh, so I love you, mom. Thank you guys for being the first ones to submit a picture. And you know, uh, my mom, she she's never been a plant person. Uh, no offense, mom, I hope. Uh, you know, but uh, never known her really to grow house plants, and so I got her an orchid last year and kind of showed her like a little bit about what I think you know we knew is best to take care of it. And so she sent us some pictures, and so we love you, mom. Thank you, and way to go, way to get your uh, fowl to rebloom. And so thank you guys for joining in. Please send us your orchids in bloom, and we'll post them here at the end of an upcoming future video. And Paptiana, nice, easy home grower if you can find one. And uh, yeah, it's uh, I like the white ones, you know, every now and then to get a white bloom it is pretty nice and small, compact. So have a good one. We'll see you guys back here at LPLR soon. <laughs>